Hello students, in this video we are going to continue with chapter 10 light. Hope you have understood the introduction part given in my previous video. In this video we are going to start with reflection first. What is reflection? It is the process of bouncing back of light after striking any surface or an object. Now just like when we throw a ball on the ground or a wall, it bounces back. Similarly, when light falls on any object, it bounces back. A part of light may bounce back or maximum light may bounce back depending upon the object at which it strikes. So, I hope you have recalled this definition which you have studied in your lower classes. Let us recall the laws of reflection. There are two laws of reflection. One of the laws is the incident ray, reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence lie on the same plane. Let us understand this law using this diagram. Now we know that plane mirror, plane mirror is a mirror which we generally use at home to look our face, to look ourselves. What is mirror actually? A simple glass plate. A thin flat glass plate which is polished on the back side with aluminium or silver. A very thin layer of aluminium or silver is deposited on the back side of the mirror or we can say aluminium or silver is sprayed lightly on the back side of the glass plate and thus forming a shining surface and it is called as a plane mirror. So if we draw here a plane mirror with the help of this line we are representing a plane mirror. This polishing shows that, that the other side is reflecting. Now here I have shown a dotted line. At the center O point, it is perpendicular to the plane of the mirror. This dotted line is called as normal. Normal means perpendicular to the plane of the mirror at its center. Now this ray as I have told you in my previous class that light which falls on the surface is called as an incident light and light which bounces back is called as reflected light. So in this diagram, if we consider this AO to be incident ray, then our reflected ray as shown here is OP. And according to this law, the incident ray AO, the reflected ray OB and the normal, that is this is a normal dotted line at the point of incidence lie on the same plane. What is point of incidence? This point O where the incident ray normal and the reflected ray meet at the mirror. Second law states that angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. Now what is angle of incidence? Angle between the incident ray, let us consider AO to be the incident ray. Angle between the incident ray and the normal which is represented by I here this is angle of incidence and our reflected rays OB so R which is the angle between the normal and the reflected ray at O this is angle of reflection according to this law I is equal to R so whenever light is incident it bounces back into the same medium after striking any mirror falling on the other side of the normal and making this angle R in such a way that R is equal to I in other words, if I choose this incident ray XO, making an angle I dash with the normal, then my reflected ray will be OY, which makes angle R dash, R dash with the normal in such a way that I dash is equal to R dash. So, hope you have understood the two laws of reflection. The incident ray, reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence lie on the same plane. It means this incident ray, this reflected ray, and the normal at the point of incidence lie on the same plane. In this case, the plane is plane of the port. The other law is angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. It means when we change I, R will change in such manner that I is always equal to R. As in this case, I is equal to R. For this case, I dash is equal to R dash. Now let us see how image is formed by a plane mirror. Now let us draw the ray diagram for this. Let us take a scale and draw a line with these dashed lines which are showing polish on the mirror, back side of the mirror. So this is a plane mirror. Let us take the center point of the mirror and 
represented by O. This is O which is the center of the mirror is called as pole of the mirror. Now from this O let us draw a line which is perpendicular to the plane of the mirror. This line which is perpendicular to the plane of the mirror and is passing through its center or pole is called as principal axis. Now this is principal axis, this is pole of the mirror and this size or this height is called as aperture of the mirror. Now to draw the image of an object, let us first draw an object. How we will draw the object? We will just draw one arrow like this and name it as AB. So AB is an object in our case whose image we are going to form by using this plane mirror. So from A, let us form the image of A and then ultimately we will draw the image a dash B dash of this object AB. Now from A we have to take two rays. Let us choose this one ray. This is one incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis. Let us take the other ray which is oblique to the principal axis and strikes the principal axis at O. Now Arrow is must. We have to show arrow otherwise our diagram will be wrong. So there are two incident rays which are coming out from it. Actually there are infinite incident rays but for a diagram two minimum are required and they are enough. So one incident ray is parallel to principal axis and the other incident ray is oblique to the principal axis. Now we have to get the reflected rays by using the law so of reflection that is I is equal to R. Now in this case when we talk about this point here normal is normal means perpendicular. So this will be the perpendicular to the mirror at this point. So we can say that this incident ray is lying on the normal. It is like this. If my incident ray is lying on the normal what is the value of I? 0 degree and we know I is equal to R so R should also be 0 degree. It means if my incident ray is lying on the normal like this, then my reflected ray will retrace its path back like this because I is equal to R is equal to 0. This is called as normal incidence. Normal incidence means when the incident ray is lying along the normal. So for the first ray, for this first ray I is equal to 0 and R is equal to 0, it means if this is my incident ray, this is my reflected ray. Now for the next incident ray, this, I will again be using this law I is equal to R and draw the reflected ray. Now this is my angle of incidence in this case because principal axis is a normal at this point. So my reflected ray will be this. You can use either D or you can use a trick. Here, if this is, let us say, 5 cm above, if you don't have a D, you just draw a point 5 cm below and then you can draw this. This. So, if you don't have D, you can draw the reflected ray like this. I is equal to R. I have chosen a point which is equidistant away from B but lying on the other side and then I have joined this line. Now this angle will be equal to, these both angles will be equal. So for this incident ray, this will be my reflected rays. Now to get the image of A, I have to see where the two reflected rays meet. This is my first reflected ray and this is my second reflected ray. Are they going to meet on this side? No, they are diverging, they will not meet. So in this case, to get the image, I have to produce them backwards. I am producing both the reflected rays backward. This ray I have produced it backwards without tilting the scale. And similarly, this 
ray will be produced backwards. So this is the point. Now this should not be solid. This has to be a dotted line. Because the real reflected rays are these two. These two rays, I have just produced them backwards. So this is the point where the two reflected rays appear to meet. Let us call it as A dash. Now I can draw the image using these dotted arrows and name it as A dash, B dash. So to get the image of A, I have to at least choose two incident rays coming out from A. Using the laws of reflection, I have to get the two reflected rays and I have to get the point where they meet or appear to meet. In this case, as they are not going to meet this side, obviously we have to produce them backwards by using dotted lines, not solid lines, and get the point where they appear to meet. That point is represented by A dash and this is now the image of A. Similarly, we can get image of all the points, but obviously it is not required. So I will draw this dotted line and this now A dash B dash is the image of object AB. This is how we can draw the ray diagram showing the image formation by a plane mirror. Let us now see the properties of image formation by image that is formed by a plane mirror. In this video now we will continue with properties of image formed by a plane mirror. We have just seen how a, an image is formed of an object AB after the light from it reflects from the plane mirror. Now let us see this diagram once again. Now in this diagram this is U. What is U? U is the distance between object and mirror. U is called as object distance. This V is the distance between image and the mirror and it is called as image distance. Here H represents height of object, H dash represents height of image. Now let us see the properties one by one. First property is image is as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of it. It means this distance u is equal to v. We know that when we stand in front of mirror, if we are two steps in front of mirror, our image which we see in the mirror appears to be two steps behind the mirror. So in other words, u is equal to v, image distance is equal to object distance. But image lies behind the mirror. Second is height of image is equal to height of object. From this diagram also we can measure that this height h is equal to h dash. Otherwise also when you stand in front of mirror, you see your image which you see into the mirror is of same size as that of yours. Third property is image is virtual and erect. We'll go in detail about this property in the later next video. But let us just know what is virtual. Now erect we can see. Erect means it is straight. When you stand straight in front of mirror, your head up and feet down, your image is also in the same way, head up and feet down. It is not upside down. So we say image is erect. Now what is virtual image? We can see here that the image is formed, we have shown it as by dotted lines because the dotted lines appear to meet here. The reflected rays form the image by meeting at a point. But when they actually meet, image is real image that we'll study in later classes. Now here the two reflected rays appear to meet. They do not actually meet. They appear to meet at this point thus forming the image. So when image is formed, when the reflected rays appear to meet, then the image is called as virtual image. So image is virtual and erect and remember one thing that virtual image cannot be obtained on the screen. It means when you place, if you are standing in front of mirror and your image you can see in the mirror which is lying equidistant behind the mirror. If you put a screen here, white screen here, white sheet, then will your image be formed on that sheet? No. 
you only are able to see that image into the mirror but image is not it cannot be obtained on any screen okay so image is virtual and erect a virtual image cannot be obtained on the screen and last property is that image formed by a plane mirror is laterally inverted now laterally inverted means there is inversion but not upside down left hand side of object becomes right hand side of image and right hand side of object becomes left hand side of image you must have noticed when you stand in front of mirror and move your left hand the image's right hand moves so are you getting this lateral inversion is there it means left and right side of object and image gets exchanged so you have to remember these four important properties of image formed by a plane mirror we'll continue with this in the next video